Greetings and welcome back to the Car Doctor Studios. Hey, today I've got an 05 RX 330. And we're going to do a radiator replacement. It's actually the second time in exactly one year to the day that we've done a radiator. I replaced it and flushed the cooling system exactly a year ago and uh, about a week or so ago I got it in for a coolant loss and found that the left side of the tank assembly was leaking at the core. So this second time around and it's definitely not a uncommon problem. I've run into this quite a bit lately. I believe it's a design flaw with the radiator or the aftermarket radiators are just flawed in their construction. It doesn't seem to matter the brand. Uh, I have not attempted a dealer supplied radiator uh, as the cost is a little bit prohibitive. So people opt for the, the aftermarket replacement and uh, I oblige them and I'll honor the warranty. And in this case, it's a covered repair, but uh, I don't know, I'll give them, give them the option of purchasing a manufacturer radiator and applying the cost of the initial radiator towards that purchase, but the, the cost differential is, is quite a bit. So they're gonna opt to trying this again. We're gonna give it another shot, shot and see how it goes here. So uh, book time gives about 2.6 hours labor to do just the change out does not include flushing or anything. I'm anticipating that's not gonna be necessary since I completely flushed it and the fluid looks really clean from a year ago. So I don't feel like it's related at all to the leakage. I don't think it has acidity buildup or anything weird like that. There's no collision damage or anything else that would indicate a problem that's caused this other than just a poor design or poorly manufactured part and it's probably one of the most common radiators that we're replacing nowadays. This is not an isolated incident. I have other customers who have been to other shops and experienced the same issues with their Lexus vehicles and their replacement radiators. Both Toyota and Lexus vehicles affected and uh, across multiple uh, SUV and truck platforms. So. Not an uncommon occurrence, but we're just gonna change it out and I thought I would invite you along for the procedure. So I'm gonna get with it by raising it up on my two post hoist here and we're gonna drain the coolant. Thanks again for stopping by the studios. After raising the vehicle, I removed the front lower air dam cover in order to access the radiator drain petcock. I loosened the drain petcock and drained the coolant. Then I lower the vehicle and remove the upper radiator core support plastic cover. I also remove the two attaching screws for the air cleaner intake air duct. I also removed the wiring harness clips attaching the solenoid harness to the air intake duct and the vacuum hoses to facilitate complete removal of the air intake duct. Now I remove the one mounting bolt and the lower air intake duct.
Now I remove the upper radiator hose connection at the radiator. Now I remove the wiring harness for the radiator fan. Now I remove the attaching hardware for the upper radiator core support. Now I gently pull back on the upper core support, exposing the radiator assembly. Now I remove the two upper radiator cooling fan assembly mounting bolts. And I raise the vehicle and remove the two lower radiator fan assembly mounting bolts. Loosen and remove the two bolts attaching the transmission cooler tube assembly to the lower radiator core support. Now loosen the lower radiator hose clamp and remove the hose. Now remove the radiator fan assembly. Now with a stubby Phillips screwdriver, remove the two lower radiator mounting bracket screws. Now remove and plug the transmission cooler lines. Now while slightly lifting the air conditioning condenser core, Slide the radiator back slightly to allow for removal of the radiator assembly. As you can see, the radiator core is leaking at both the core to tank connections on both sides of the radiator. Now you'll need to transfer the lower radiator mounts to the new replacement radiator on aftermarket radiator installations, it will be necessary to transfer all the attaching hardware. Be careful when replacing the lower bracket assembly and affixing it to the new radiator that the through hole for the lower condenser bracket is centered properly on the mount itself and around the lower radiator core pass-through hole.
after the hardware has been transferred to the replacement radiator assembly, carefully install the replacement radiator in the vehicle, taking caution to avoid any damage to the radiator core. As the radiator is dropped into position, pull up and back in and position the air conditioning condenser core over the lower brackets and affix the lower bracket screws retaining the AC condenser core to the base of the radiator support brackets. Now reattach your transmission cooler lines Now reinstall the lower radiator hose and tighten the clamp Now after transferring the necessary hardware to the replacement radiator reinstall the upper condenser core supporting brackets Now reinstall the radiator cooling fan assembly and temporarily install the two upper mounting bolts. Now we'll raise the vehicle so that we can access the lower radiator fan assembly mounting bolts and install and tighten those. Now reinstall the lower splash shield. Now install and tighten the upper core support bolts.
Now install the air intake ducts and route and attach the vacuum hoses and electrical harnesses in the proper location. Reinstall the plastic covers. All right, we about got this one wrapped up. Pretty straightforward job. Actually took me uh, well under book time. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and refill it. I'm gonna use my airlift cooling system refilling tool. I do have a video uh, depicting the use of this tool. And I'll put a link to that in the description of this video so that you can refer to that as well. It works good in uh, especially these import applications keeping any air locks out of the system as we're refilling it and avoiding a overheating situation or an improperly functioning heater as a result. So anyway, I'm gonna do that and get this thing back on the road. So uh, one more side note, I, I think if you're gonna keep your vehicle and you can afford to do it and you don't wanna do this twice, I'd recommend a quality radiator and and to my knowledge, that just doesn't exist apart from the manufacturer replacement radiator on this application. So anyway, I appreciate you watching. Thanks again for stopping by the Car Doctor channel, and I wish you good luck with your repairs. Have a good one.